And welcome back to another video. We've actually got part two. Hopefully by the end of this video, uh, the car will be running, but it is time to finally throw the wiring harness back in the crown. So just to catch you up, if you are new and hopping on this video, the harness was ripped out of this a couple weeks ago in the coilover install video. And we, in the last video, took out the harness, the dash, literally everything that is behind, well, the firewall basically and everything is pretty open we ended up just starting it it is windy i do apologize for the wind but this is the old harness everything is in one piece we just took the new harness out the box it's inside the car which i'll show you in a second and here is the other pieces i was really confused on what this harness was but this is the part that goes right here where these plugs are all the way underneath this front beam part all the way through there and into the car. So we will not need that. Luckily, I'll be able to unbolt it and undo the clips from the back side of the fuse box, but let's get into it. We will have to put all the AC stuff back and get it recharged eventually. But hopping into the car, I just put the harness on the driver's seat, ran it over here because I wanted to start getting some of these plugs at least together and plugged in before I started filming. Ty just came out to help, so now we're gonna dive into it. But this is the part that we have to run through the firewall. The easiest way was, again, to bring it in here, just feed it through because it's just that piece right there. It has the sealable rubber XYZ, whatever that's called. And I wanted to get all of these attachments together. So for the most part, it is, I guess, a guessing game, but there's only certain male, female plugs, different sizes, different colors that go where they're supposed to be. So that is gonna be making it a bit easier. Um, I just wanted to show you guys this before putting the AC stuff back together, like I showed you those two boxes. And hopefully today, um, I don't know how far we're gonna get. Today, tomorrow, same video for you guys, but um, hopefully tomorrow, if anything, we can finish it back up. I don't know if we're gonna be able to start it without the dash. I don't see why we wouldn't be able to, but I at least wanna get the harness in here. Everything hooked up for the most part. See if we can start it and go from there and make sure that we're not gonna have any issues or anything to track down. So let's hop into it. Let's get this mess of a harness back together and hopefully get the crown back on the road. <laughs> And a quick update before the sun goes down. Uh, just started bolting some stuff together. Ended up getting the two AC pieces together, bolted in, started running the wiring harness back through, got some of the bolts together, started plugging a couple of the things in, um, just slowly kind of figuring out where everything goes. It is pretty easy that we have these up top because it kind of runs us where the main harness, I guess, goes. Um, the next thing that I'm going to try to dive into is actually putting this whole fuse, like bracket, harness, whatever you want to call this part of it, um, that bolts up in the corner. And it was kind of a pain to take out, but uh, hopefully I'm going to get that in before the sun goes down. Steven's on his way here. And then we're going to head out. It will be dark, so it won't be fun. But the only thing I'm really, I think, going to have an issue or a harder time figuring out is where some of this middle stuff goes. Um, like this, I do believe it goes right there, but I don't know where these two things bolt in and these two things bolt in because it's attached, but there's nowhere around it. So it is kind of a play it by ear, uh, plug a couple things in, move on, plug a couple things in and figure out where it goes from there. Hopefully tomorrow we will finish this up, um, figure out where most of the plugs go. We gotta get this whole steering assembly back up and bolted up a lot of plugs go on there and then from that we might be able to hit a startup oh i also have to do the fuse box so just take a couple plugs from the bottom of that and put it together so i guess we will catch you guys tomorrow and uh hopefully make some big progress and welcome back to the vlog uh it's actually 
5.30 in the evening and this has been the mess of the day. So we actually came back and started at like 9.30 today. Put the entire harness in, try to get everything that we could um, attached, find all the plugs, figure out how we ran it because the one thing that I really wish that I did was take pictures a lot more like all the tricky ways that some of the wires and stuff were all run didn't take pictures so kind of guessing right now but the way that the harness is set up i've got the main bar all locked in the full steering column is back and bolted up and then i took all of the plugs behind the dash plugged it in and plugged in the battery right here um, I just wanted to make sure it has power some of the other plugs like this goes for the ABS as well as some that are over on this side um, which I'm just gonna leave undone for right now I wanted to make sure that we're not having any issues so we are getting blinked at not sure what that means but after I plug the battery together first light that we see is that See if it will. It's okay. It wanted to. It wanted to. All right, well, we'll leave it at that. It turns over, the harness is connected. Um, I'm sure it's blinking at us because, I don't know, doors are open, there's things that are unplugged, maybe a couple things that aren't grounded out, but the steering column has power to it, the dash has power to it. It turns over, wants to start, so that is a giant step and well hopefully tomorrow we can start to button this up there are a couple things that I think are a little bit tricky figuring out where uh, like some of this stuff goes um, there's a very long wire which I believe it runs all the way around here but I can't find the plug also it attaches up here and uh, it's just a mess so tomorrow I'm gonna mess with that because the Sun's going down it's been a solid, what, nine to five? It's been an eight hour day. We took a little break, but um, I'm just glad that there's power and it turned over. So we're gonna finish this up. We've got Mr. Mark Sparks. He showed up. We'll drop his Instagram down below if you guys wanna check that out, but we're getting the fenders rolled. Um, we're just doing the front. Um, he told us it's probably best for the rear, if you guys remember the Majesta video, to trim some of the inner quarter panel just because of buckling or uh, paint fender cracking. Basically, it's a, it's a lot easier and less risk. So that's the plan. Uh, we'll probably get to that maybe in this video or the next video. We did pick up some T-Demand arms, which are for an IS300, if you didn't know. This chassis is compatible with JZX100, but JZX100 is compatible with IS300, meaning that IS300 arms should fit on this. To my understanding, IS300 arms are longer than JZX100 arms, so if we were to put a stock IS300 upper control arm on this, it would probably give positive camber. Being that we got T-Demand arms, these should allow us up to, I was told negative 13 on the IS300, so I'd assume a negative 10 to 11 on the crown, but I've got some ideas for shortening these if necessary. I don't think we're going to go past that just because we've got the Vogards and they're not crazy spec, but big hype on these as well. And welcome back to day three after an entire day of probably six, seven hours of working on this. The dash is finally back in so as you can see we've still got uh to put like trim pieces back together uh we've got the glove box you know all the stuff down here but found out where every all of the plugs went found out where some of these wires that we really couldn't find um when there are a couple that i'm gonna have to either trace down or i'm hoping go to a couple of things that are here but as you can see there is a battery i mean uh, a light flashing and down there that just means that the doors are open um it's just a reminder so with that being said let's show you guys what all this work has finally paid off i guess we can't say that yet because we haven't driven but we'll flip this up right here we'll show you that we got the door open sign we got lights on the dash and she starts right up so we finally oh, yeah. after hours and hours 
and hours of days. Hours of days. Hours, That's what days, I say. minutes, seconds, everything. Oh yeah. But anyways, we did let it run for a little while, so it did start to warm up um, really slow, so that's good that we have no heating issues. Uh, the door's open. Well, this is because I'm sitting in it. This is the airbag, which one, the airbag is not connected here, and two, the airbag's not connected there. And then the ABS, um, I actually do have to change the ABS computer that's at the bottom because they match harnesses, not chassis, and the harness was sent to me without the ABS, so I reached out to Andrew from XAT. I gotta reach out to Lonnie, and hopefully I can get that ABS computer no issues. The only plugs in the engine bay uh, that go to the ABS, those are the only ones that are giving me issues. I got all of them but one plug, so I do believe I'm gonna have to cut and splice from the old harness, the ABS plug, and put that one onto the new harness and hopefully we can just get rid of the ABS lights just in general. I don't really care. I don't really think Ty cares, but it's nice not having any lights on the dash. So that is uh, the excitement for today. It's been a long and hot day, long and hot couple, well, week basically, but running smooth. Like I said, those plugs, they plugged in this plug it's completely different. Um, this is an eight pin. The one that was in it is a six pin uh, to match up with this. And this is different than what is on the old harness. So I may have to cut and splice that. Other than that, uh, gotta put all the battery shroud stuff back together. Um, check over a couple more uh, plugs and get, I believe one or two more plugs on that side connected. Overall, we've got the car back running. So that is, a giant milestone um, it's been hot days long days and a lot of calling and texting I know Andrew probably hates me from a million different messages I was just back and forth hey what's this plug I can't find this how do you get this piece off but um, the trim putting back on is going to be the easy part so with that being said uh, let's see if Ty has any words Man, all I gotta say Shout out to everyone that's helped. Shout out Logan for helping me. But uh, we thought we were gonna be out a lot longer and somehow we we're only out for about a month, month or so. We do have to have, Ty is gonna take the fenders off so that we can run uh, the new harnesses. We're pretty much gonna run them like we did before, but probably gonna do along the lines of what I did for the LS and take metal straps with the holes in it, forgot what it's called, and actually bolt or screw it to the actual chassis to the actual frame up front underneath so that there's no way it can get ripped out as well as we did keep the fender well covers the plastic pieces so we're going to try and put those in um, i think there is going to be some spots that it's going to rub so we'll probably just cut those areas out but for the most part especially because we have the turbo kit uh, we want to make sure that almost everything that goes into the engine, as well as, I mean, might as well, defender wells and stuff, um, stays covered. So, well, I think that's about it. It is in the, in the air right now. Uh, we got the fenders rolled. There was like a small little issue up on this side, but this side looks pretty good. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we got the T-Demand uppers that uh, Ty will probably throw on. We'll see how much camber it gives, uh, how it fits the wheels, and go from there so maybe once we get the fenders off and start tucking the harnesses we'll try the wheels but other than that I think uh, I think it was a successful day so cars running we haven't tried driving it yet but this is a big step because before it wouldn't run so I think that's it I, Danny and Josue are gonna come by um, he's picking up a diff so stay tuned for that get Danny's car, Danny's WRX, back on the road for GAT. Josue is picking up a wheel that had a crack weld, and uh, I think that's about it. So we'll catch you guys once we get everything torn apart, but for the most part, today was a good day. And day three, here we are, hopefully wrapping it back up. Um, we just took off the spindles, which I was gonna show you guys installing them. Uh, we are actually tucking the harness as well. I know a lot of people have messaged me, yo, why don't you run the harness through the engine bay? Yo, why don't you do this? Well, I'm not gonna cut and extend this, um, one, because of how hard it is to find this harness, as well as all of the work that goes into it if uh, we have to backtrack issues, and 
there was nowhere in the firewall to run it through without extending it. So that is the reason, but Tyler is getting the fenders finally on. Spindles are off. As I mentioned before, um, Ty's now gonna be running T-demand arms, upper control arms. Uh, these are actually for the other side. I just wanted to test fit and make sure that the IS300 ones fit the crown. So these will end up being taken off, put on the other ones, took the spindles off so we could get those done. Um, those will probably be shortened 35 millimeters and for negative four tilt to get the rest of the camber from the upper um, to fit the vogards. And as you guys can see, we are finally starting to wrap everything up. Um, I will say that there are a couple plugs that I've been able to, unable to find. So we're just gonna be tucking those away in the back somewhere for right now. Don't know if it's because of the other car had some different trim stuff or maybe things that needed to be um, plugged in for, who knows, honestly the car runs we haven't driven it yet. Once the spindles are on, we'll be able to take it for a test drive and make sure it's uh, working. But Tyler lost the fender bolts, so <laughs> that's what he's looking for right now. But with this hurricane, with this weather, it's actually, it's Monday. Um, we're not supposed to get too much weather today. I think it's supposed to come in tomorrow. So the rush is kind of to get everything on the outside done as fast as possible today. We will have to, I do believe, trim the rear quarter. So to fit the wheels, there is this like on every car, you guys can see it right here. We got to pop these out, but on the Majesta, if you watch that video, what we did is basically from here, we kind of made like we went in some and then trimmed it like halfway all the way back just so the wheels could fit. They could be rolled in the rear, but it is a risk of buckling it. And being that it's a quarter, which is almost irreplaceable compared to a fender, we're not going to do that. So um, for tucking this harness, like I said before, any crowns, I drilled out these uh, rivets so that I could put the harness on top of it. I took leather and wrapped it around the harness, then took a clamp, tightened it all the way, used the excess to self tap. And then just so it doesn't come out, I bent it over itself. So I'm going to be doing that on this side as well while Tyler is doing the fenders. And once everything's buckled up, and we can throw the spindles back on, then hopefully we will go for a test drive. So almost everything on the inside is put back together. I feel like I've showed this video, uh, showed this portion of the video like a million times, but here we are. Vents and stuff, this has to pop back in, and then we do have to put the center console piece together, but this is out because of the radio. Other than that, dash is back in. We will end up putting the door cards back in, but that's a whole deal that we're doing uh, aftermarket speakers and stuff. So we'll get to that later. For the meantime, it's a race against. For the meantime, it's a race against the weather, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing on the ground by this evening. Have a test drive. Make sure that everything fits. Dial in the height. Dial in the camber. Fit the wheels on, and Tuesday, tomorrow, hopefully before the weather comes, he can get alignment so that we can drive it up to Gatlinburg. So I'm trying to get this video out as soon as possible. Um, I might not wait for him to get an alignment by the time I post this. Hopefully we'll have a driving video this evening or tomorrow morning, and then I'll get it chopped up and posted for you guys. So stay tight. We're gonna get this other side done. Gotta cut up the pieces of leather, and then yeah, once the fenders are on, we will go from there. For day three, day four, whatever it is of the install, we are finally putting stuff back together. Um, as you can see, we've got the Vogards on. They have been on the rear. Uh, we actually just raised the front. We are actually chasing or running away from the storm, hopefully trying to put this together. It is Tuesday and we leave on Wednesday. So we just got the T-demand uppers in, um, put the spindles shortened 35 millimeters, tilted for negative four. Hard to see, but they look OEM as normal. Hit me up for spindles done, but T-demand uppers are in. Coilovers were raised um, about an inch from what we had it before um, because it was rubbing on the top and we don't want that to happen again. So Ty's gonna put the other Vogards on we're gonna lower it down. We already know it clears, but now we have to make sure that it clears the top. So 
We haven't taken it for a drive yet. Um, we're just kind of dialing in the height and stuff and that drive will be in a couple. Tyler has an alignment for the morning and then we will be off to Gatlinburg. So um, I'm probably gonna go film that, putting all the cars on the semi tonight. And hopefully you get this vlog edited tonight as well so I can drop it tomorrow so you guys have something to watch. I also know it's been a week. And then all the content for this weekend, well, you guys will see that as well. So we're gonna get this thing dialed in. Hopefully this is the perfect height. Hopefully it's not too high. Um, if it is, well, I guess we'll just adjust the coilovers again. Shout out the man behind the camera, helping me with the harness, first of all. Yeah, this uh, is something. already the biggest pain in the ass in the world. We had enough hiccups just dealing with with the car itself, but then we got on the road, ripped the harness out. First first drive, like first, 45 minutes yeah, driving. Say, about, we've only driven it for about 35 minutes, so first drive will still be pretty much our first drive again. And then, uh, yeah, we have, what, we leave tomorrow afternoon. Yep. We'll get this on the road later today and in 14 hours, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're supposed to get a bunch of rain and stuff later today, so once we drop this on the floor, get it for a drive, um, we will figure it out from there and I will update you guys maybe get some rollers maybe save those for tomorrow I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's a race against the clock Weather's coming in for those who don't know we are in Florida in Orlando and we're gonna be hopefully actually not hopefully getting the hurricane, but we will be getting it just not bad hopefully not bad i think that's what i was trying to say so let us tie this back together we'll catch you guys in a couple let's get it i mean that's not that's not terrible we can bounce it a little bit and see where it sits I mean, it is a little bit. Probably have to lower it a little bit. All right, I guess it's quick update time. Uh, this is the final front height. As you guys know, the car is running right now. Um, we're gonna take it for a ride. Hopefully, we won't have any issues. The little plastic pieces at the end of the fenders he'll end up putting on, but here we are. So, this will be the first drive, technically, with the coilovers on since, oh yeah, well, the incident. I guess that's what we'll call it, but a couple degrees in the front clears um and that's really about it so let's go for a drive let's see how she drives and beat this weather out still got to clean up some stuff um everything that has to do with the ls i have to clean up before the hurricane just so we not get stuff flying around but uh let's get to it big moment And I hope you guys enjoyed that little montage, a little drive. I know it wasn't much, but we just want to make sure there wasn't a bunch of rubbing issues. Drove it, I mean, maybe a mile or so, half and a mile there, half a mile back, but finally it sits. Yes, it is uh, drivable now. The door cards are still not in just because of the whole audio system and stuff. Same with the center console, but the dash finally in. There's a couple trim pieces that go right there. Back seats are finally in. Uh, the reclining, for some reason, is not working. Um, I think there is one plug missing, which we're gonna have to find later, but for now, for the trip with, well, you guys might be able to see some of this Starting weather here. coming in, but it's, it's getting, it's it's really gray. Right now, it's, it's not on camera, but oh, there you go. It's really, uh, well, gonna come in. So we're getting some rain right now. I'm gonna wrap it up before it gets too dark. Hopefully you guys uh, like the vloggers. Let me know what you guys think down below and uh, throw some comments and stuff. This was probably like 80 plus hours of work. Um, just in the past week was maybe like 60, 70. Took a lot and I probably will never do this ever again if it actually came down to it. I think I'm gonna end up paying someone just because of time. I mean, 
I guess who knows if I end up blowing up and you know become smart as Jimmy Oaks with all that stuff can do a plug and play harness or something then that might be a change but anyways this is how she sits this is how she's going to get um, we're gonna try and just put a couple more trip pieces back together that we can um, but other than that here we are so hope you guys enjoyed this um, I know it was probably not too uh, crazy hype like you thought it was gonna be just what rollers and all that but Time has been cut short. Um, alignment for Tyler is tomorrow. We've got to pick up a trailer to load up our boy Seb's uh, G in the morning, and then we are off to Gat uh, tomorrow. So by the time you guys see this, we will be on the road to Gat. I'm gonna try and get this edited and uh, out tomorrow. If not, I'll edit on the way up there and then post once we're finally in Gatlinburg. So you guys will be seeing this like the day after or something. And uh, yeah, so if you guys see us up there, say what's up, come say hello. Uh, just love meeting everybody out there. I know I don't have like a giant following, but super cool to see people that, you know, come together and stuff that watch the vlogs. So final words by Tyler before we leave, a bunch of rambling and stuff, but I don't even know. It's finally back together. I'm happy it's driving. I mean, other than that, we have a lot more stuff planned on the way.